You, you have no idea how I, oh, I, I tried to bargain with God. I tried to bargain with God. For years, I did. And I got a tap tonight. It's, it has to do with Bishop's message. I was, um, <laughs> that's so uncomfortable. You have no idea. Is my time up? No. Oh. You don't have any idea. It's just desperation. And some people think, you know, wow, after preaching for over 40, 40, how many, six? I can't count, so I used my fingers to. Woo, it's a whole long time. 42, 43, 44, 45. I've been preaching for. <laughs> If my math serves me well, 45 years. <laughs> Woo! It's about to be 46. Hey! And um, <laughs> I never dreamed I'd ever get invited into a church. <laughs> Most of the time, I, 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 I preach um, outside. Most of the time, I preach outside with no mic. And um, <laughs> I just, I don't know. I, I, I'll just tell one story, and I have a few pictures. It's very rare, but I, I thought there's one that I wanted to show you. And it's because it's, it's a now, you know, it's now. Um, and I don't know if they have it. Nobody, I, I don't even know how to figure that all out, but I think Rebecca told them. Um, it's up there. Oh no, not that. Keep going, keep going. Keep, but that's now, that's, that's last week. This is now, this is last week. This, this, this is last week. All these kids coming to Jesus. Yeah, they all, all their houses were burned to the ground. All their farms were burned to the ground. They could keep going, move it on, move it on, move them up. These are our guys. This is last week. This is now, now. These are Bibles that came from the underground church in China. Keep going. The, these are, these are, this is the team. These are, these are my, my discipleship team. These are this, this is the, uh, the school. There's Papa Roland, Rolf Fonzo, that we have over 110 teachers. This, this is audio solo. Bibles. These are people just running to Jesus. Just, just keep going. This is all this week, okay? These are, these are new. That was last week. We celebrated late. That's Rollins' birthday. That's our son Ben's birthday. And that's the Lama's birthday. Not her birthday. I don't know her birthday. But anyway, I know my kid's birthday and my husband's birthday. So keep going, keep going, keep going. This is, oh, stop there. Brenda. Okay, okay, this is really cool. So just pause there for a second, because this is really cool. So when my baby, my baby had a baby, it, we, do you know any, any moms here? It's like 10 of you, praise Jesus. And um, any grandmothers here? Okay, sweet Jesus, pray for, for more young people in the meeting. Okay, but go, go grandmas. Come on. But the grandmothers were louder. Maybe because it's more fun. I don't know. But um, they're louder. So uh, when my baby had a baby, we, we, you know, we had worship music on and, and, and Crystal and leave it up there. Don't show me. I'm up here. They're okay. So, so we... My daughter had our, our first granddaughter and we wanted, you know, we had the music, we had candles, we had worship, we're just praying and we had the supernatural childbirth book and we're like worshiping, it's just gonna be glorious and none of it happened like that. 
None of it. It all just like, it was, it was like ridiculously long and um, it was so hard. And then there was an emergency C-section. It was like, ah, oh, this is not what we wanted. And, um, but, but all that matters in the end is, is the baby's born. And, and, and Chris Lynn and Zoe are, are filled with joy. But it came to this thing where we were, we were like wondering about what was God doing? What were you doing, Lord? Why was it not like we planned? Has anyone ever had things happen in life that weren't like you planned? Was it, is it all just kumbaya, my Lord? Kumbaya. I just, that's how some people even make, make, make it sound as they sing and pray and worship. It's like kumbaya. Well, it was none, none of that kumbaya stuff. It was just hard. And then it got harder. And, and, and I went to the Lord and I, I got a couple of friends to pray. And as I was praying, the Lord said, you want to kick the devil in the teeth? Yes. <laughs> See, I'm a lover. Oh, I'm a lover. I will come here. I want to hug everybody. But when it comes to the devil, I hate his guts. I hate his guts. And I'll like kick him and stomp him. And I'm like, I want to, I want to kick him, kick his teeth out. I was, I want to kick his teeth out. I always want to kick his teeth out. And I kicked a lot of his teeth out. He's, he's really, you know, he's having a hard time. He's having a very hard time. Because we're going to kick his teeth right out. Shakababa. And the Lord said, this is how you're going you're gonna to do it. You're going to build a maternity ward. And it's called Zoe's Maternity Ward. And you're going to save the lives of hundreds and thousands of babies. And there it is. And it took seven years. Seven years. And, and on where, what day was it? Friday, I'm holding more babies in my arms. I get to go in there. These guys, and did you notice they're all Mozambicans running everything? You see, it's true. If you just, you just don't give up. You know, it's cool. Some of you wanted impartation today. Yay. Um. Stuff happens after that. <laughs> Stuff happens after that. <laughs> Shaka Baba. Keep going, keep going. Oh, this little girl, stop there. This, this little girl right here. She's with Mika. That, that actually, that's an American there, but she's got some color. So she blends unlike myself. And, and this little girl here, we were just, we were just like, this is our agape program. And she's just coming and she, you see her weeping there. She had just come to Jesus. And all these other kids were just surrounding her, just praying for her. And, and she just, this is, this is um, like last month, this, this picture. And people were just holding at her and we were just praying over her, especially children. She, um, she saw so many beheaded people, so many bodies. And, and the whole, just keep, keep moving them. All these people, um, They'll, that's just that's just a part of the agape program. They don't fit in the picture. Um, a lot of these kids um, have have been through hell, 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 hell. But they're so full of Jesus. They're so full of passion. And when it comes time to sing, when it comes time to worship, when it comes time to give God glory, they let out a sound. And and there's something I felt like even the Lord saying to, to like, I got this, this literally, I put this with Rebecca together, like what, 
10 minutes before it started, I said, I feel like we need to see this because sometimes we get complacent. Keep going, keep going. This is our school. 3,700 kids in our school. And, and, and I have to tell you, because this has to do with impartation. That's just one school. Pastor Jose, raise your hand, stand up, do a cartwheel. I don't know. Elipod's there. And Pastor Jose. He's a, one of the first 12, the first 12, he leads the movement in the South. I'm so happy he's here. Anyway, this all happened after impartation when I was burned out and I was like, done. I was done. I was toasted. Wanted to work at Kmart. But instead, this happened. So did you go back to that tree? I want to show you that tree. I, I'm excited because this has to do with impartation. This has to do with what God wants to do through you. See that tree? Do you see that tree? It's a pretty big old tree, isn't it? When the Lord spoke to me, when I was snorkeling, build a university, I took a stick and I took a stick around that tree just like this. That tree, that tree right there. I took a stick around that tree, around that tree. And I said, right now, here's first grade right now. And I wrote, ah, bay, in the dirt. Hey, y'all have words from God, but you're waiting till it's all just kumbaya. Take a stick, get a stick, draw a circle around a tree and start somewhere because we're not called to just wait. Oh, when I have, you know, all the provision. Oh, for paid sakes. We didn't have provision even for rocks and sticks. There was no provision for rocks and sticks. The Lord's looking for lovers that are in love with Jesus, that believe Him, that trust Him. And when He says, go, we go. When he says, do we do? When he says, rest, we rest. Remember the manna on the seventh day? Ha! What happened? Oh, please, somebody. There wasn't any to gather because it was a day to rest. Why don't we like to do that? Because we like to keep the oars in our hands. We want to keep the oars in our hands. <laughs> no way. That's the tree. Look at that. And there's a kid named Yorkie. Keep going. This is almost done. I, I don't know what I'm preaching on yet, so this is helping me. Shakaraba. These are our mamas. These are mamas in, in, in our widows and... Um, program and they're just full of Jesus. They pray for me. I pray for them. Keep going, keep going. They're just worshiping. They're loud. They know how to praise God. Keep going, keep going. This is now, now. And this is a friend of mine just put that up there. The hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. And then there's one, oh, that's Pastor Antonio, he's my right hand. He's just so full of Jesus, it'll make your head spin. Ah, that's just people coming to Jesus. I think that was last week. That's a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> That's my grandson, Lev. I had to put that in because some of you think my kids don't, none of them look like me. Those two, <laughs> that's Lev and Zoe. Why'd I do that? Because I saw the picture, I thought it'd be fun. That's my husband, Rolfonzo. We've been married for 42 years. Yeah. I've never actually done this. The first time, uh, whatever, how many years I've been preaching. Um, first time I've ever, ever done this. First time. You can move it, though. You can move that picture. That was long enough. Now, I wanted the one picture. The one thing I wanted was that video, but the Lord used it. It's all good. It's the first time. This is Sunday. 
Oh, turn it up. This is Sunday, this Sunday. Over 300 new believers getting baptized. This is Sunday. In the midst of a war zone. <laughs> Every one of them lost their home. Many of them lost family members. Except for the pastors, all of them. Look at that. We should be joyful, guys. We should be joyful, guys. Something about us, something about us, we forget, we forget how to praise. They didn't forget how to praise. These are brand new baby believers praising God, getting ready to follow Jesus into, the, into that baptismal place, that ocean. We say, you ready to die? Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So I thank you, God. Wow, I want fresh bread. I want fresh bread. We need fresh bread. Ah, I think I have something more now. Um, thank you for, for watching that. Thank you. Um, thank you for praying for us. Thank you for praying and trusting Jesus for us because it's, uh, it feels a little strange, you know, when you come straight in. It does. It it's never doesn't feel a little strange, especially when, when you're like, okay, let's just sing in the Spirit and, and you can't hear anyone singing in the Spirit. And you're like, okay, Lord, I think I'm on a different planet because... I just feel like I'm on a different planet for a moment. But but then but then you just like, okay, okay, Lord, we're gonna we're just gonna get further, we're gonna go deeper, we're gonna get further. And I just believe that by the end of this evening we're get to get to the place we need to go. And sometimes it's just like, okay, we're gonna have to fight. Do you do you ever feel that? Randy, have you ever had a fight? You have to shoot rabbits and fight, right? I love that. You shot the rabbits. That was great. <laughs> and we just keep going. Sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's hard. When you, when you live with, with, with the, the kind of tension we're, we're in all the time, it can be really challenging. It really can. But at the same time, <laughs> His joy is enough. His power is enough. His joy is enough. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. This is from 1 Corinthians, this Apostle Paul speaking. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end so you will be blameless on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God who has called you into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord is faithful. He's gonna keep you strong to the end. This was written to the Corinthians and it's as relevant today, right now in this meeting as ever. We have to be strong to the end or do you just wanna wobble on out? How do you wanna finish? We wanna finish strong. Whether the Lord gives us a day, I mean, every week when we go out at home, we never know. People say, well, well aren't you scared? I mean, yeah. I know perfect love casts out fear. And I'm, I want perfect love. But there's still, there's still some times where it's like, okay, okay, Lord. I, I trust you, but this is, this is challenging. I'm trusting you. I feel another tap tell you a story. That's a hard story. I'm gonna tell it to you because it, it has to do with impartation. It has to do with the messages you've heard. It has to do with what Leif was talking about, what Bishop's talking about, what Joanne was talking about, what, what, what we're, we're seeing all of us talking about. 
We're so called to finish strong. We're called to walk strong and finish strong. And we cannot get weak and wimpy. But love, we've got to keep the love on. So there's this group that um, is, they're not very nice. Have you ever been around that? Those kind of people? They're just not very nice. You know, these people are not nice. Actually, they're, they're, they're not pleasant. They're, they're extremely not pleasant. I'm trying to be nice as I describe them. And I didn't have enough love. And I actually called Leif one time from Mozambique. I did. Because I called him and I said, I don't have enough love for these people. I don't. They're, they're, they're beheading our, our children in our churches. They're torturing our pastors. They're, they're burning town. They're torturing. This is my time. It's only in one province, my province, the province that God gave us to, to live in. And I'm like, God, this is not nice. I don't like it. So I remember, and I, I called Leif. This was a while back when it first started. And I'm like, I don't have the kind of love. love. I don't have the love I need for them because I just think they should all be tied up. Which I still think in love. <laughs> I think they should all be tied up and, and left to um, think about what they're needing to think about. I really do, and I say that in love. I didn't have enough love before. I would have liked said tie them up and, and now with love, tie them up. <laughs> but the, the, the attitude of the heart matters. And my heart changed and you said, you said lay down the rod. I'm like, okay. And I literally had a rod that some friends of ours, Jennifer too, friends of ours gave us. And I, I just laid it down. I'm like, okay. And I just said, okay, I, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you that we're going to finish strong. And as we go out, we just never know if we're going to come back. But then part of me is like, wait a minute, I have to come back because I still have more that the Lord showed me, that the Lord put inside my heart. So somehow I'm going to have to come back. And, and a, few, um, a few guys got really nasty. Have you ever been around really nasty people? No. Okay. Just me. All right. So you can't relate. Maybe I should skip this story. It was like we were being nice. You know, as church, we're nice, right? We should be nice. I mean, sometimes it's scary in church and you think you're going to be, and people are going to tie you up. <laughs> Especially if you do ho or whoa or ha. <laughs> but we're supposed to be nice in church, right? At least we're, we're supposed to be kind and give someone our seat. Well, these guys, I, I don't know. I just thought, don't feel, I don't feel, I don't feel the joy here. I'm sitting in normally, what, what, what I do, I'm just sitting there in the dirt. We break up in groups of 50 and we just share the gospel and all of us are doing it. And I'm the only pale one out there. <laughs> but I just forget, you know, that I, I don't look the same. You know, I just forget. So I just was forgetting. I'm just talking and listening and praying. And, and suddenly one of my friends, um, Ansha, just grabbed my arm on this side. She grabs me and she's a big mama. She's a big mama. She's a strong, strong big mama. She grabbed me like that, she said, in, in, uh, in, in a local dialect and in Portuguese, two languages. She made sure that I understood what she was saying. She said, get up now, we're going now. Then her husband grabbed my other arm. Bam, he's a worship leader. He used to be a bandit, he used to stab people if they didn't give him his shirt. So he never bought a shirt, he said, his whole life till he was saved. First time he had to buy a shirt was after he was saved. I thought that was sweet. Um, 
we started giving him shirts after that. It's like, okay, just in case you've had a thought about backsliding, here's some shirts for you. We're, we'll be okay with these. You're going to be okay. He grabbed me, then my team. And this is really important for all of you ministers out here, uh, whether you're in the marketplace or the church or itinerant, whatever you are, wherever you are, you need a team. Sometimes we think even in impartation, it's like me, 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 me. Well, it, if it's you, 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 you could get as blasted and whacked and undone and filled up and smashed and everything, but if it's just you getting that experience and it doesn't multiply to thousands and thousands and thousands of people, then I don't care what your word was or what do you think, like, do you think I can, like, God's going to give me Mozambique by myself? Oh my goodness. That's just bizarre. That's bizarre, times a thousand. No, but we are called to be little catalysts. And little catalysts uh, are, are meant to be anointed and, and empowered so that others would gather around. You see, there's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and then tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands. And when there are people in love with Jesus, so in love with Jesus, you can't stop us. You see, it doesn't matter. It does matter in some ways. I want to correct myself right there. I was going to say it doesn't matter how many of us die because there's always more rising up. And I have not lost this many friends, my own friends, as, as I have in the last two years ever in my life. Like, it, it, it could be overwhelming, and yet it's not. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And what we learn to do is we learn to, we learn where to go and what to do. So my team that I trust with my life and need to trust with my life, and they trust me with their life and I trust them with my life. They surrounded me, they got me in my truck and, and we left. And that's when guys were coming with machetes and, and um, rocks. And they were talking about getting me, taking me in another language that was not one of my languages. It wasn't one of my languages. If I hadn't had that team that spoke every single one of the di dialects and languages represented there, if I hadn't had my team, I would not be here with you. Do you understand? It's not just about you having God touch you with an impartation. It's about you being touched with an impartation. Touch another and another and another and another and another. And God multiplying His love and His power and His Spirit through you until you are not alone, until there's an army all around. Do you understand? We have to stop looking at things just as individuals. It, it's got to be corporate. There has to be a corporate move. You see, by ourselves, um, it, it's just not how we've been created to be. So I'm standing, I'm standing up. They surround me. They get me to my truck. And I want to tell you the end of the story. It was, it was scary. My heart's pounding. I mean, we're driving. We had probably nine four-ton trucks. And, and they, we were not finished with food distribution. We were not finished with audio solar Bible distribution. But when my team said, go, I went. I could have said, no, 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 I'm the leader here. I'll tell you when to go. How foolish is that? But how often are we foolish? And we think, no, no, I'm in charge. Oh, drop the oars, toss them over the side. You're not in charge. The Lord's in charge. And the Lord will put others around you that will know His voice and will hear His voice. And we can't all just hear His voice individually and think it's all kumbaya again. We need each other and we all need to hear the voice of God. And in movements, we hear the voice of God. The Lord will literally tell us in the prayer house when we're not to go somewhere. 
In the prayer house, how do we prepare? We prepare. You think that took a while for me to get up? You, you have no idea. That was like, that was as far as I could push it in the Western world. Oh, I'm, so, I'm happy. I'm not mad. I'm happy. I'm just intense because there's an intensity about what the, what the Lord is calling all of us to in this time we keep hearing. Martin talked about it. We're, there's a war going on. With us, it's in the natural realm, not just the spiritual realm. But if we're not ready for it, if we're not equipped for it, then when things get harder in America, you just get wobbly and it's like, oh, oh, I'm gonna just hide in my room with four people and pray. And I'm not going out there. The world's too crazy. We're called to be the hands of Jesus, the feet of Jesus, the heart of Jesus. We're called to shine in a broken world and we're going to have to stay strong. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep reading and keep telling stories for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Verse 18 of 1 Corinthians 1. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligence I will frustrate. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in its wisdom... Since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Wow. To save those who believe. Jews demand a miraculous sign. Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who God has called, both Jews and Greeks. Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were noble by birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of the world, the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Holy Jesus. No one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Who let him who boasts boast in the Lord. <laughs> it's, do you know that's what adoration is? As we're singing those songs, we're boasting in the Lord. We're just boasting in the Lord. He's good. He's worthy. He's excellent. He's, he's everything perfect and, and, and worthy, worthy, worthy to be worshiped and worthy to be praised. Let's boast in the Lord. Let's boast in the Lord. He's so good. And, and we're just little, little people. Did you ever see a glove? Okay, I just... I don't know, like in Mozambique, no one had seen a glove in most places we'd been. So I was thinking we were in a place, there's cold, cold. Some people are in the cold. Some people went through a pandemic. We've seen gloves. Did you ever look at that glove and say, wow. Wow, what a glove. That's 
a magnificent glove. I'm so excited. That glove just makes my heart sing. Look at it. It's just perfectly made and everything. This glove is perfect. How long could you do that? How many words could you have about that glove? It's just a glove. Even if it's a snazzy glove that you bought at Nordstrom. It's just a glove. It's useful if it's put on. It doesn't have any use just sitting there in the drawer or the floor or the cabinet. It's only useful when it's put on. Whoa! Lord, put us on like a glove. Lord, put us on like a glove. Lord, put us on like a glove. Put me on like a glove. I can't even pray it for you because you'd say, well, God's a gentleman and um, you can't ask God to do what he's gonna do through me. You're just you. That's right, I am. I can't pray that prayer for you. I can pray that prayer for me. Put me on like a glove, Lord. Dance your dance. Sing your song, move and have your power flow through me, Lord. Just put me on like a glove. I want to be put on like a glove. I'm okay with that. I don't need oars. I, 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 I thought I did, but I don't. When, that's why Paul could say what he said. He understood this. Let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Anything good comes from him. It's true. I know we're sons and daughters, but we're also just gloves. Come on, Holy Spirit. Fill us, fill me, fill me, fill me. I want to be put on like a glove. I don't want you to discard me, Lord. I want to. I want to finish strong. I want to like. I want to like a glove. This is a great spot. Watch out when they get up. Who? Who? Stuff happens. Who? <laughs> Who? Okay. Oh, we just went past 911. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. It is an emergency. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And we will rest in the shadow of your wings. Oh, yes. Psalm 91.1. Oh, Rabashea. Oh, I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling. My message, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. <laughs> Woo! That's what we want. So guess what happened with those, those rascals? No, they're more than rascals. They're broken little boys. Guess what happened to them? Two of them came to one of our churches way past the farm. And one of uh, my heroes, Liz, she's an amazing, amazing missionary. She's still there. She's a gutsy girl, boy. She's a gutsy girl, full of God's glory. And she was out there with Martino, way, way out. And two of these guys, two of the Al Shabaab guys that came to get me that day, they came into church and they said, hands up, like our hands are up. We're going to follow Jesus. We can't keep our we can't keep from calling Jesus. Jesus is Lord. All we see from you guys is love. All we had is pain and hatred and murder and and we just see love and they're like we're just surrendering our lives to Jesus. And then they did something. They gave me a triple capalana from that stair all the way it would have gone to at least here a triple red capalana material that we use for everything and he said give it to mama Ida and tell her we're sorry I'm like who I already forgave him but that was nice that was nice God's God's got wisdom 
He knows how to do things. And when, you're, when you have love in your side, your heart, then you do have authority. And where you don't have love, you have no authority at all. You just don't have authority where you don't have love. And Jesus showed us what love looks like when he died on that cross. And he said, he said, I died on that cross that every man, woman, and children, child that would come to me would be saved, that would know me. And oh, how glorious that is. And then he said, he said to all of us, he said, come and follow me. He said, come and follow me. Follow the lamb who was slain. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Model your life after Jesus. Oh, everything about Jesus is perfect and glorious and praiseworthy. Oh, let us follow our lives after him. <laughs> I... I I keep coming back to this story, so I'm going to have to, just like, I get tapped. That's how things happen with me. Sometimes it's people tapping me, and sometimes it's Holy Spirit tapping me through the person. Sometimes He just taps me. So uh, as I was hearing um, Bishop and that story today, and I was just like praying, oh God, let the river of God crash in on us. Lord, we just want the presence of God, don't we? We just want to jump in, swim in, and that's where we're going tonight. We're just going to jump in and swim in and get there. But there's something about that river that, that God wants to drown you in that river. Like He does want you dead. It's true. He's very nice about it sometimes, but He wants you dead. To, to just don't make any mistake about it. And I, I keep coming back to this story because of, of hearing that message today. I think it was today. It's all kind of a blur, but it was powerful. And the, the thing that happened to me, I was shipwrecked. And when I was shipwrecked, um, really shipwrecked, it's not a vision. Um, I was shipwrecked. And so I'm on the shore and I needed to go preach. Um, the Lord called me to go preach at Oxford University. Uh, and so I was going to go preach there, but I was shipwrecked. So and I couldn't get any message to them. And, and the place I was shipwrecked on was called London. And I said, I said, I got to go. I'm stopping in London. So you guys got to pray that I get out of here because I need to go speak. And they said, oh, just tell them all hi. I thought that was awesome. The guys in my village there where I was shipwrecked said, tell everybody in London hi for them. I thought that was sweet. That's how they are. Very sweet and kind, unless they're not. But I'm, I'm just praying, praying, and first boat filled with water that I got, you know, this canoe. It was, it was everything that could go wrong went wrong. The first boat sunk. The second boat um, filled water past my knees. The third boat um, that took me out couldn't get me across. I'm sitting there with a couple of my Mozambican friends on the top of the boat that sunk into the sand. And I'm just like, Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. I'm going to praise you, Lord. You said to praise you at all times. For all praise. I'm praising you, Jesus. Praise Jesus. Kushikuru. Kushikuru puya Yesu. Kushikuru, kushikuru. I'm like, kushikuru puya Yesu. Hallelujah. And I'm hot and I'm tired and I'm shipwrecked. And I got, I didn't sleep at all. Because the night before, after we got shipwrecked, we got to the place and they'd built me a hut and, and they just don't have exterminators or anything. And the fire ants came and the fire ants were biting everybody. There were only a few of us in there. And they were biting us and it's pitch dark and I don't have a flashlight. And I just like hit a wall and I'm burning up with these fire ants. I prayed there'd be mo no snakes because I read about Paul and, and the snake. I read that a few times. I'm like, no snake, no snake, no snake. And, and so it was fire ants. I didn't cover my bases. You know, I read Ephesians 6 every day, but I didn't cover my bases. Here come the fire ants in a ridiculous um, time at night. 
They don't know what time it is. They don't care. They just bite. And after that, it got, it got so powerfully glorious. You know when it's powerfully glorious? Have you ever been inconvenienced by believers? Maybe in a conference where God's crashing in and it's like 2 a.m. and you just want to sleep for three hours and you're inconvenienced. Do you understand that? Has that ever happened to anybody? Especially in Brazil. But, but there's an inconvenience, but it's a glorious inconvenience. This was a glorious inconvenience. So I'm, I got welts all over me. I can't even find the train in the dark. I'm, I'm just not, I mean, there was no wa- fresh water. It's just, it's just miserable in every natural thing. Every natural part of my flesh was just like, I know I'm a missionary, I love it. I'm, oh, yay, yay, yay. <laughs> I'm, God, welts, I'm tired. And then the believers, they don't know what time it is. They didn't know what time it was. All they knew was that we were there. And they wanted us to dedicate the new church. So they show up. We haven't even, I don't think we slept even 40 minutes. And you can't really sleep with red fire ant bites. You just don't sleep. And they're coming and they surround the hut. They're singing Walk with Jesus, he's so good. Walk with Jesus, he's so wonderful. Walk with Jesus, he's so good. And they kept singing, Weta Naye. And I'm like, Weta Naye, Weta Naye Zula. Just walk with Jesus over there. Just let me sleep for a few minutes. Weta Naye Zula. They wouldn't have it. Rupa naye, rupa naye, rupa naye. Now they're like, get up with Jesus. That's what they were singing. Get up with Jesus. Get up with Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Get up with Jesus. I'm like, I love Jesus. I just want to sleep with Jesus. I just want to sleep with Jesus. I don't want to get up with him, walk with him. I mean, I'll talk to him, but I in my dreams, baby. I just want to sleep. But there's no, they would not have it. They're like, you just got to come. You got to, we preached. We're shipwrecked. We have no way out of there. So they're like, you don't know have anywhere to go anyway. Just preach. So you preach one message. And they're like, no, 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 no. Preach again. All of us preach. Except the guy who didn't know about, well, well, he just, we didn't ask him to. That's all I'm going to say. Zip in a boca. Zip. Sometimes just don't ask. Everybody else preached three times or so. Preach, preach, preach. We preached. Now we're so preached out. We're just preached out. We're preached out. We're just hot, tired, exhausted, happy. Yay, God, we're happy. It's hot. We're tired. We're happy. Yes, we are. New believers. It's a tiny village. It was jammed. There must have been 40 people there. It took us years to get to that village. (laughs) A whole village by the end, God saved us probably 96 people. But see, it's not about the numbers. It's about the gospel going forth. But what happened when I tried to get, finally tried to get home? Another nice guy takes me in his canoe with a couple of my friends. And then we end up back on the, our boat that's like sunk with the nose up. We're sitting on the nose our feet just dangling over the side. I want to just show you a picture of it because this is what it was like. Like we're sitting there, it's so hot. We're so tired. We're full of welts. We're, we're just, we're just like, like this. And I, I thought about impartation. (laughs) I really did. I seriously did, Randy. 
I'm like, yeah, that's just great stuff. That's just awesome. I'm sitting out there, yay. Mozambique, yay. Ho oh, yay, ho oh, yay. <laughs> Yo sé, consegue entender. Ho oh, yay. <laughs> That's how I felt. Like, okay. Now I'm, 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 I'm just thinking, God, now could you just maybe rescue us here? Just be nice, you know? And, and what he does is he sends the most disgusting boat. Christina, you've heard this, you know this. The most disgusting boat on planet Earth. That's the boat he sent us. Some of y'all don't like the way God's gonna rescue you. You know, there's foolishness involved in the cross. And the way that Jesus rescued us on that cross, it's just foolishness to so many. And the way the Lord wants to take you and make you able to finish strong and to finish well is gonna look like foolishness to many. They're gonna say, well, you just, you're not slick enough. They won't say it that way to you, but that's what they mean. You're not slick enough. You're not, um, you don't have enough um, backup plans. You don't have enough motors, enough oars, enough, enough sails, enough, enough of this and enough of that. And you're just not able. And people will tell you why it's not possible all the time. They'll just keep telling you why it's not possible. And I was feeling the impossibility of the situation at that moment. And I was not, I wasn't happy about the, the guy that came to rescue me. I didn't like him. I didn't like him. I didn't like him. I'm supposed to like everybody. I loved him. I just didn't like him. Why did I not like him? Because he wanted a whole lot of money. And I was not happy about it. I had my little waist pack on. And uh, I had some money in there. And he wanted it. He wanted all of it. And I said no. And he said okay. And he took his boat and he just kept, kept speeding off. And the Lord said well, the Lord sometimes just says, you're dumb. <laughs> that was really a dumb move there. Some people said, have you had inner healing? Yes, I have. And the Lord still says sometimes, he says, you know, you're not, he doesn't exactly say you're dumb all the time, but that was dumb. Okay, correct the way. That was dumb. Because what am I doing? Not going to pay the price? I'm not going to pay the price. We're just going to die out there. So why would I worry about the money in my, my little uh, waste pack? That's just dumb. That's just stupid. So, so my, my brother said, call him back. And we're whistling. We had these little whistles with life jackets. <coughs> we're like, woot, woot. he's coming back. He's going, ha, 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 ha. Look, <laughs> I gotcha. I said, you got me. You got me. I'll fork it over. You got me. And then we're going off there and his motor blows up. <laughs> Why am I telling this story? Because this is like boat number four. And his motor blows up. And the man looks at me and he says, this never happened to me before. And I said, this whole story happened over this one tap. I wasn't going to go here, but I got a tap and it had to do with oars. Because that boat, that man said, I never ever had my engine blow up. I said, well, it blew up now, but it's not your fault. I said, it's, it's probably something has to do with me. So he's looking at me and he's shaking his head. His boat was full of bird poop. It was so disgusting. I said, sir, very politely in several languages. I said, sir, where are your oars? He said, I don't have any. And so when, when I heard Bishop today, 
I had a whole nother way of thinking about that. <laughs> I heard him say, you know, I, I, he read the scripture and I'm thinking, I don't know if everybody's tracking in the same way I'm tracking with the no or thing. Because I'm in the boat, the boat that, that's the, the, the uh, uh, machina, spludil, whatever. The uh, it boat blew up. <laughs> the, I lost my English. The thing blew up, the engine, the machina blew up. Anyway, it blew up. And the guy had no oars. And so when I'm hearing today about this river and I'm thinking, what does it really mean to have no oars? What I'm thinking of was my situation that day when the boat's about to crash into these huge black rocks. And, and, and we were panic stricken. We really were. We were scared. You say you shouldn't be scared. We were scared. We were tired. We were, we were scared. We were hungry. They had natural sunscreen. I didn't. And so I'm like bright red. It's not feeling good. And now there's no oars. And we're about to crash into a rock. And so when you hear and what we're about to do tonight as we're gonna go into the river, we're gonna go, like we're gonna go into worship, we're gonna get into the river, is we're gonna go to a low place, a low place, because the river flows to the low place. And we're literally gonna toss those oars over the side. Well, this, in this situation, it wasn't my choice. There were just no oars. And it's a natural storm. The storm that shipwrecked us is still raging. And, and I'm scared and I don't know what to do. And, and yet, at the same time, I know God is in charge. I don't know the end from the beginning, but He's in charge. Just like He's in charge right now. He's in charge of this meeting. He's in charge of the world. He He's, he's the potter, we're the clay, we're the glove. He can do anything through anyone. So I'm there and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just praying in tongues. We're all praying in tongues except the guy we didn't ask to preach. Everybody else is like, we're just like crying, we're laughing, we're crying, we're laughing. It's like our emotions just had no grid. We were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. we're like punchy. We're hungry, we're punchy. We're like snockeratoed in the spirit in a, in a weird kind of way. Because we just know we're either going to live or die. It's gonna be one or the other, and it's gonna be now. We're either gonna live or die. And then the thing that I'll never forget, and this is not something you would forget. This story is not something you would forget. When the Lord says, what about throw those oars over the side? He means no backup plan. So I had no backup plan. This guy had no backup plan. We had no backup plan. Do you all know our only backup plan is the plan? Nothing in the flesh is worth anything. Nothing in the flesh is worth anything at all. You can do nothing without Jesus. Let's look at this. We're about to jump in. I'm gonna ask Steve to come, if he would, and Joseph to come, if he would, because this is gonna help you to realize you're not gonna be trapped here all night. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we may understand that God has freely given us. I want to read that one more time. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. 
This is what we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. He can't understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual man makes judgments about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Do we? Do we have the mind of Christ? Do you want to be possessed by God? Do you want to be possessed? Do you want him to put you on like a glove? Then we're going to need to drown in the river. We're going to need to drown in the river. We're going to need to drown in the river. There's something about drowning in the river. Oh, Karea. And where we look from a different perspective. You see, when we're in the river and we're face down, He'll pull us under. He'll say, it's no longer you that lives, but Christ in you. No longer you that lives, but Christ in you. It's what baptism represents. No longer you that lives, but Christ in you. And when you step up, when you go out, when you move, Sheikha Rabbits, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Not your own ideas, not your own wisdom, not your own plan, because all those things come for nothing. Come for nothing. None of us expected what we were about to step into. We are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. I want to tell you, the Lord wants to fill you. Right when all hope was lost and the, there are no oars in the boat and we think that this is the end and some of you have gotten very close to that point several times in your life. You're like, it can't get worse. It can't get harder. It can't get more confusing. It can't get more difficult. It just can't. I mean, that's how, how, how you can feel in a world God man. But if you fix your eyes on Jesus, everything shifts, everything changes, everything completely changes because Jesus knows what's happening, because Jesus has a plan, because Jesus knows what's going on, because Abba Daddy God knows the plan, He knows the purpose, He knows that tonight there are going to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who are going to jump into the river, toss their oars on the other side, they're going to toss their oars on the other side. They're going to jump in. They're going to get rid of their own wisdom and they're going to take a hold of the mind of Christ. Oh, Rabasheya, we're going to drop our oars on the other side. We're going to step into the river. We're going to go past our ankles, past our knees, past our waist and over our head. I was, I was, so, 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 so not knowing what was going to happen. And that's when my rescuers came and were six naked fishermen. And I didn't appreciate that kind of rescue. I'm not kidding you. I'm like, Lord, seriously, this is not, this is not what I, I'm so, this is so beyond now what I can handle. I just can't handle it. And they're like, get in the boat. And I'm thinking, I can't, I don't, I'm not, I can't. I mean, they just, and they're just fishing. They don't expect a pale little blonde lady out there, you know, in the middle of the ocean. They were dressed appropriately. I was the one that just was like, God, I don't know what to do. And I was like panicking in my heart. Lord, I'm fixing my eyes on you, Jesus. I'm sure not going to look down into that boat like Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm serious. I know it's funny, but it wasn't at the time. It wasn't at the, now it's funny, but at the time it's like, Jesus, 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 seriously, Jesus, how many things can go wrong? This is too wrong. And they're like, get in the boat, like, stupid white woman. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> okay with it. And I'm just, and it's like these poor guys, they're just re there to rescue me, and I'm fussing about it. 
I have nowhere, I have no other plan. There's no way. That's it. It's like jump in their boat. The other boat has no oars. Jump in this one. One of them jumps over the side, swims to the shore. There's no way, none of us, I'm a really good swimmer. I could have never done that in a thousand years. What he did, I could have never done. He got there and, and he literally brought shorts back. I'm not kidding you. Who does that? This is, this is so holy. You see, these guys weren't even, they were not born again. But they had so much honor and so much of, of, of so much grace and honor and kindness that is sometimes it makes some things we see in the body of Christ just wonder if we really know Him. Because they did that for love. And we got in. And I, I feel like you need to hear this. A fence will stop you getting to the other side. A fence will stop you getting to where God wants you to go. A fence will stop you. We're not called to be offended. We're called to forgive, to love, to be kind, to be merciful, and to not fuss. So, These guys were so kind. They put their shorts on. I get in the boat. It's a tiny little boat. It was only created for six, but they put four more in. I've put my face down, face down, planted my face down. And the boat was full of fish, fish of many kinds. They were fish just the whole bottom of that boat was fish, 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 fish. And the Lord started speaking to me about Ezekiel 47, Revelation 22, about the fish of many kinds and how we needed to be in the boat with Him. And, and it wasn't about our own effort. It was about Him. And this is what this message, merciful God, who shows us where we're going. Oh, the mind of the Lord, the mind of the Lord. We're His fellow workers. We're God's field. We're God's building. For the kingdom's not a matter of talk, but of power. The kingdom's not a matter of talk, but of power. It seems to me, Shokorobo, that, that God has put apostles on display at the end of the procession, like men condemned to die in an arena. Paul said they've been made a spectacle, a spectacle, the whole universe, the angels as well as to men. They are fools for Christ. This is what he said, but you are so wise in Christ. We are weak, Paul said, but you are strong. You are honored, we are dishonored. To the very hour we go hungry and thirsty, we're in rags, we're brutally treated, we're homeless. We work hard with our own hands. When we are cursed, we bless, and when we are persecuted, we endure it. And when we are slandered, we answer kindly. Up to this moment, we have become the scum of the earth, the refuge of the world. I'm not writing this to shame you, he said, but to warn you as my dear children, even though you have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father, he said, through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. Oh Lord, oh Lord, Oh Lord, we want our lives to be so filled with you, Jesus. So filled with you. And I want everyone to stand right now. Lord, we want our lives to be so filled with you that we would imitate you, Jesus. And those Lord, that are so filled with your spirit. Oh Lord, how Paul could could speak those words because he lived the message. He didn't just speak the message. He lived the message. He lived it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for every word, Lord God, that you speak. Speak to us through your scripture, Shaka Rabat Setaya. But we thank you, Father, for the words of of 
the apostles, Lord, the voice of the apostles through the Word of God, those that walked in Your power, walked in Your anointing, walked in Your purposes. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, we want to be willing, God. Shake a rabba, I say to You tonight, Lord, as so many of my brothers, as so many of my sisters have lost their heads, have lost their heads, have been beheaded, have been tortured, Lord, even in these several years, Lord. I want to be willing, Lord. Lord, if it's upside down, Lord, then let it be upside down because God, I just want to be willing. Lord, I want to stand strong. Lord, I, I want to walk into the face of famine and war and destruction. I want to walk straight into the face of it knowing that my Redeemer lives. I want to be so immersed in the river, God, that I throw the oars on the other side, knowing, Lord, that You've got a plan that goes beyond mine. Shake a And Lord, I don't want to speak, Lord, just the words, Lord, but I want Your power. God, I ask for the power, the power of Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost. Shake a So touch us right now, God, that we would be empowered Powered by you. Shake a kotorobo shaya. Lord, we're gonna go low tonight. We're gonna go low tonight. We're gonna get into the river tonight because it flows to the low places. Oh, Rekidiataya. Here's the last bit. I feel so strongly. Whoa, about what God wants to do right now. As we toss the oars, we toss the oars that we jump in. We toss the oars that we jump in. In. Shana Messiah, we toss the oars and we jump in. Here's what happened. Oh, Ramana Kiantaya. This is, oh God, you're just so good, Lord. You know what you're doing. You know where we're going. You know every message, Lord, that led up to this one, Lord, and will lead up to the one that will come tomorrow. And what you want to do then? Shake a Everyone, God, we thank you, Jesus. Hiatarabba Shea. In all the time that we've seen the gospel go forth in almost 29 years now in Mozambique, we've never seen a harvest like this one. Absolutely every man, woman, and children we're speaking to, they're, they're, they're just following Jesus. They're like, of course, of course, of course, of course, we'll follow Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. All the shehas, all the children, all the mamas, all the, even the government officials, they're just saying, yes, 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 yes. It is the greatest privilege. It is the greatest honor. It is the greatest privilege to be in a revival. Oh, Rabba Shea in the midst of a war zone. Oh, what a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Lord, I just want to thank you for the privilege. Lord, I thank you for the privilege. I thank you for the privilege, Lord. I thank you, God, for impartation. I thank you, God, that you saw me, Lord. You saw me. You knew, Lord. You knew what I would need. Lord, you know what I still need. I thank you for that, that other impartation in Brazil, God, where you asked me the same question through Randy again. And Lord, every time, Lord, my answer's the same. Yes, Lord. 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 Oh, yes, God. Thank you for the privilege. Yes, God. I feel like people tonight, we're just going to go so, so, so. We're going to come all on the sides. There's something about making a move. We're not going to, we're not going to do things the way we did it earlier because this is another movement time, another movement of the spirit time. This is going to be a different way. I feel like the Lord's just say, it's time, it's time, it's time for you to catch the wind of the spirit. I want to fill you. I want to fill you. I want to fill you with joy unspeakable and full of glory. That day, that day, that day, that day, looking at all those fish. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God, oh God. I said, God, oh God, whatever it takes, Lord, whatever it takes. I want to see the harvest, Lord. I want to see the harvest. I don't want to say four months more and then the harvest. I want to see the harvest, Lord. I open my eyes. Lord, I want to see the harvest. 
us, Lord. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Wow. I feel like there's some harvesters in this room and the, and the Lord's asking you to jump in the river, to lose the oars and to catch the wind of His Spirit. That day when we got in that boat, that boat began to sink. That boat began to sink. And I'm thinking, Lord, surely, Surely this is not how it's going to end. Surely, Lord, after all this, surely, Lord, it's not going to end this way. And I, like I am now, I had my eyes down, down into the, into the boat, just the bottom of that boat and my face was just down on all the fish. My eyes were closed and I was just praying. God, I'm just praying. I don't know what to do. I have no oars. I have I have no I have no way, Lord. This boat's sinking too. I don't know what to do, Lord. And then I suddenly hear, "Ho!" Oh. I've heard that sound in Toronto. I've heard that sound in revival across the planet. Ho, 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 ho. And I hear the sound of ho, and these men are pulling up on a sail. They're pulling up a sail. And as they're pulling up the sail, they're crying out, Ho, 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 ho. And when we hit that, 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 that sail was up, when we hit, hit that point where the boat was tipping into the water, when that sail was up, we caught the winds and the boat was brought up, upright. Shake a rabba, sota rabba. Make a move, make a move, make a move, make a move to this side. Make a move to the front. Just, just if you can, you can kneel before the Lord. Lift your hands before the Lord. It's time to catch the wind. It's time to catch the wind. It's not time to row anymore. We need to stop with the rowing and catch the wind. We need to stop with all the wisdom of man, all the ways that man has decided the harvest would come. We never decided what we're seeing now. We never thought that the greatest harvest we'd ever see in northern Mozambique would come in the midst of a war zone where people would be losing their homes and their farms and all of our churches uh, being burned and all these people, even people of the same faith of the Al-Shabaab being tortured and burned if they don't look like them, talk like them, walk like them. We didn't want it this way, but Lord, we say yes to where you're going. Yes to where you're taking us. Yes to the wind of the Spirit. Yes to a faith that's not just words. Yes to a faith that's not just words. So blow Blow wind of God, blow wind of God, blow wind of God. We're gonna go in, up and 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 in. Shela la 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 Yesu. Oh, come on, come on, come on. We're gonna go up, 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 up. Karararariyesu. Now, shere Now, shere re re re. Now there'll be a sound released. Now there'll be a sound released in this place. Oh, Until I'm undone. Until 
until I'm undone, until I'm undone. Oh God, drown me in your river, drown me in your river, Lord. Oh, resurrect me, Lord, with a new way of thinking. Oh Lord, not with man-made motors and man-made fuels and man-made oars and man-made ideas and man-made strategies and man-made plans and man-made ideas of how it would happen and what it would look like. And God, you are a God who knows and you are a God who shows us Jesus, 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 Jesus. So we fix our eyes on Jesus right now. Just do it. Toss the oars over this side. Fix your eyes on Jesus.